It's 2011 Toyota Prius. Customer brought me this car about a week ago, and her complaint was as she was slowing, coming to a stop, it would go kerchunka, kerchunka. And I drove the car for two or three days and drove it a significant distance, and it never acted up for me. I was pretty sure at the time that she was probably complaining of a misfire. I have read on the internet that uh, these cars make a rattling noise when they misfire, and so she has uh, brought it back to me because it started doing it again uh, but I'm not I'm not a Prius expert but sometimes I can solve these issues and she trusts me it's a long time family friends we did scan it when it was here before and there were no trouble codes but she did mention that this time the check engine light did come on so we'll road test it some and we will Scan it again, look at misfire data, see if we can figure it out for her. She does have a story. She has never done any maintenance to the car other than oil changes and a battery, or maybe two batteries. Now, I don't mean the hybrid car battery, I mean just the little 12 volt battery that sits in the trunk. She hasn't done brakes on the car. I'm impressed. Now I know these cars, the brakes don't wear out because they're using regenerative uh, the regeneration process to slow the car so the brakes don't wear out very much but 180,000 miles she's had this car since 30,000 miles I doubt any repairs were done to it before 30,000 miles and she said no repairs have been done to this car that's impressive and makes me kind of want a Prius Volkswagen diesel crowd don't really like the Prius crowd though I don't know if that I don't know how well that would come across yeah Okay, let's check to see if this Prius has any trouble codes. And you see there we have a P0301 cylinder one misfire detected code. So we finally got this thing backed up and this is what it's doing. Uh, I've read on the internet that when these things misfire, they make a noise like that, so I guess that's just due to the misfire. The engine just started a second ago and the rattle noise was present and uh, shows 12 misfires on uh, cylinder one. I know you see that GTI every time yeah. we drive by. I kind of felt a problem there for yeah. a second, and I got one misfire on the number one. Yeah, I felt it too. Okay, the problem just happened and the uh, knock noise was there also and it went up to 29 misfires on the number one. The problem is happening again car shaking, there's the rattle noise, and 44, 47, 48 misfires. Problems happening again, shaking like crazy, rattle noise, 10 misfires, 15. a GLI. Okay, I have hooked the scope to the ignition coil circuits in order to try and diagnose this misfire on this Prius. And we have our A channel, which is blue here, hooked to the one common wire that powers all four coils. So we can see on one trace the current ramp on all four coils. The 
B channel on this red trace is hooked to our command to the number one coil which shows us uh, which one is the number one because that's our suspect coil where uh, we think the misfire is and then the C channel which is this green one is the IGF circuit on a Toyota that's like a confirmation circuit so you can see here the current ramp patterns look the same uh, this is one so that would be one three four two uh, look the same on all the coils and we can zoom in here on our number one and we don't see any vertical uh, portions so that's probably okay you have some turn on oscillations there and but we want to make a comparison to our other coils and this is the being the two coil there's our turn on oscillations there and I want to look at our turn off oscillations also pretty much what it looks like and let's compare that to our number one very similar so I don't think we can say there's a significant difference between our pattern on the number one versus the other three let's take a good look at the number uh, three here and I don't see a significant difference so I can't really say that the coils are causing the problem a lot of times you'll see a secondary problem in the coil primary ramp but um, I don't think that's as conclusive but uh, this may need some spark plugs but uh, I don't think the this is showing us anything so I think we need to look somewhere else for our misfire I know Identifix mentions EGR problems so uh, and head gasket problems um, I guess, you know, obviously there could be an injector problem or something like that. We'll uh, need to investigate further and find some direction and we'll go from there. Okay, I just want to do a brief overview of the EGR system here. We have an EGR cooler right there, EGR valve, six wires on the EGR valve and a tube running over here to the intake manifold. And as a test, we are going to block this off right here and drive the car and see if the misfire goes away okay we have disconnected this pipe EGR pipe and put a shim in there to uh, block off the EGR to see if this misfire is due to an EGR related problem but we'll drive the car with this block in place to see if uh, there's any misfires there okay right now it's early morning Yesterday we blocked the EGR port on this Prius as a test and to see if the misfires went away with the EGR blocked. Now we drove it around some yesterday and it did not misfire. The problem was completely gone, no rattle, no misfire counters. But due to the intermittent nature of the problem, I wasn't convinced that the EGR being blocked showed that the EGR was the problem because I was worried that maybe the misfire just wasn't happening right then and so I've driven it around some I drove it home I drove it back to work and I've been driving around this morning as you can see it's dark outside and I have not been able to get any misfires or the rattle to happen or anything like that so I'm at the point now I've driven it far enough I am convinced that it is that the problem is EGR related. The misfire is happening due to an EGR problem. So we're going to try to take this a little bit easiest stuff first. So the EGR valve is the easiest to pull out. I know on Identifix it shows some misfires caused due to EGR ports clogged in the intake manifold. The theory being that some of the if for instance the EGR port to the two three and four were clogged then too much EGR would be going to the number one and that would cause our number one misfire regardless the easiest part to pull off is the EGR valve we're gonna pull it off and check it uh, there's lots of reports of carbon buildup in the uh, EGR cooler and we can inspect that while we have it apart uh, this car did not have a uh, P0401 EGR code. Okay, so we have this EGR parts off. No real restriction there. 
Although there is some carbon buildup in there, I don't really feel like it's restricted. And no significant buildup and there's buildup, but there's no restriction. But right here, the valve is open slightly. I don't know whether when the car is shut off, if the computer would shut off the EGR flow. It really seems like that should be closed to me. But I'm not a Prius expert. But I kind of want to see if that's stuck there or if um, maybe the, that's just where the computer stopped it at and so that's where the computer leaves it at. Don't know. Seems strange that it would be open though. It wasn't coming across real well that it was open, but uh, if you see there as we shine a flashlight in there, you can see very significantly open. Don't know if that's normal or not. Okay, we popped a couple screws out of there. We took the motor apart, and as we took it apart, this spring pushed this part off. Yeah, you missed all that. This spring pushed this part off, and forcing it to rotate the seat on this screw. And if you remember, this was open, and it still is. But as I try and close it, you can see that that spring is partially compressed. And I can force it closed with my finger, and it comes out. And it, I don't know if you saw, it took a lot of effort. It was one-handed, so it wasn't like it was a massive amount of effort. But I can't even force this to open. You might want to expand outwards. Oh, yeah, that's right. okay. But I'm going to try and open this, and I opened it. And it just stays there with that spring still compressed and opened. I would assume that this should open back up normally, or with the, with the effort of that spring. I would assume that this is carbon buildup, and maybe us working it a little bit might fix the problem entirely. Unless there's carbon buildup in the intake also. I'm not sure I can make this free. assume this is not supposed to rotate and screw because this rotates and screws and it forces it in and out. So I'm going to, oh, it just popped back out. Maybe that's freeing up some. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's definitely coming out. I yeah, see that. Maybe, uh, maybe we can make this thing live again. Okay. Cortland has finished cleaning this up and lubricating it and we now have a super free and easy working valve. We're going to breathe new life into it, not have to sell them an expensive part and fix their problem. But that valve was definitely sticky and uh, we have it moving nice and free now. We're going to put it back together see if it fixes it. Okay so we are we have the EGR valve off and we're looking inside the EGR cooler and this thing is pretty clogged off. It's pretty dry in there. I don't know how possible it would be for us to clean that out, but I guess we're going to have to try. So I guess we need to start removing that, seeing uh, if we can clean it out. Okay, down inside there you can see some areas that are really crusty and some areas that are open. The areas that are open, I've already run a wire through it. What I'm doing is I got some mechanics wire, I put it on a drill, and if you're gentle enough, it'll go through and open it up. And I think that'll work to clear it out. I don't have a full length on there, I figured I'd go most of the way through and then put a longer one in. And obviously there's no way this is going to uh, do all of them. The ones over on the side, there's no way we're going to be able to get a wire on. But I think we can open the majority of them up enough to where it'll work. And uh, we'll get this thing flowing. Richard ran out to get some parts but uh, this is after doing some cleaning on the EGR cooler 
And you can see it's a lot cleaner. You can see the individual holes for the fins. You can actually see through them to the other side. So I'm going to take this and the uh, clean the EGR and put it back together and see if it fixes it. So we have the intake off because obviously it was still misfiring after we cleaned the EGR cooler and the EGR valve, even though the EGR valve was obviously very stuck. This is where the EGR comes in and pretty obviously it comes through those holes right there and there's one in each port. So the assumption would be that if, let's see, this would be the number four, right? Yeah. If um, the number four was clogged and the number three was clogged and the number two was clogged, then all the EGR would be coming through the number one and that would cause a misfire on the number one when a little bit, because more EGR would be coming out of that one than, than, than it's supposed to be. So, assuming that's the case, maybe cleaning these out will fix the misfire. And uh, can you grab that wire and shove it in there and dig around a little bit? Or maybe you can just grab the scribe. Yeah, the wire's fine. Let's do those. Obviously that right there is very, very clogged up with stuff and we're going to blow that out and dig it out and maybe this will fix the vehicle. I have this piece of key cable here with a frayed end and I've been shoving it in here to clean this. I'm pretty sure it's doing a pretty good job. We have finished the road test after repairing the misfire on this. It's fairly interesting for me to do. Not like I do a lot of Toyotas or there's honestly this is the first hybrid that I've repaired. I have enjoyed working on it. It was fun and interesting and I'm glad I got to make a good video out of it. If you enjoyed this video, click the like button and subscribe. And if you want to financially contribute to the continued production of these videos, find the donate icon on my website at www.kansascitytdi.com and if you're local to the Kansas City area and you want some work on your Prius, give me a call.